Hello, I am Hannah Bird with Hannah Crafted Gifts and today I'm doing a little bit of a different video. Um, I don't know if this video will ever see the light of day and by that I mean be seen by anyone other than me if even me. Um, but I recently had, I don't think it's exaggerating to say an opportunity of a lifetime at least for someone who loves Stampin' Up! like I do, which I know I have lots of friends who do. Um, so I wanted to do a debrief video, if nothing else for my own sake, to process uh, everything I got to experience. So one week ago, at least at the time that I'm filming this, I was able to participate in one of 35 events that Stampin' Up! is, I was gonna say hosting, but really joining this year in honor of their 35th anniversary. So the company of Stampin' Up! has been around for 35 years, and usually each year, regardless of their anniversary, um, they get together with the demonstrators, uh, independent demonstrators who work to sell their product and use their product um, at a conference, which can be um, usually in one of just a few places in the world. Like for instance, last year, if you watched my onstage debrief video, that's what it's called recently. I think it's had other names over the 35 years. Um, but there was one main onstage event that was many days long, um, but that was in Europe, which was unfortunately a little far for me to commute. So knowing that, they did a few what they called onstage locals, which were shorter one-day events that um, shared a lot of the same, at least highlights of information from the main event um, around the world. And so I was able to go to one nearby where I uh, grew up. I almost said where I lived, where I did live long ago in Pennsylvania. Um, and so usually that's what they've been doing, but they're transitioning to doing things a little differently. And so this year, especially it being such a special anniversary, they decided that they would have an application for demonstrators to submit for events they were already hosting, that then a member of the leadership team from Stampin' Up's home office could join in and just make extra special. Um, so one of my friends um, in the Northish Jersey SU demonstrators group that I started when I moved here to New Jersey, um, she got her application accepted for her team meeting. So if you don't know, um, demonstrators can have teams of what we call downlines who sign up to be demonstrators under them. And so she applied for her team meeting to be one of these 35 for 35 events and was chosen. Congratulations to Brenda, Brenda Miller, um, who I'll talk more about throughout this. But she graciously invited some members of our group um, that I started here, who she had met through the events that we've been doing over the last, I guess about a year and a half um, when it all began to join in. And um, many of us wanted to, you know, not just attend, but also support her um, and support the event however we could. So um, anyway, we got to do that about a week ago and it's a blur in my mind. And uh, it just shows you how busy my life has been that it's taken me a week to get to this, but I wanted to record this so that I can remember as much as possible from the special day. And in case it's of interest to anyone else, again, if I even decide to share this. so. Just know if you haven't already noticed that this is gonna be uh, kind of a rambly um, processing video. So feel free to pause, fast forward, or just um, not continue if it becomes too much for you. But if you love Stampin' Up! like me, I know if it were me who hadn't been able to attend this event, I would wanna hear this from other people who had. So anyway, um, where to begin? So I'm, I'm wearing my name tag from the event, um, which has this pin on it. Um, this was a gift that we were given um, which I, I guess is skipping ahead, but I'll go ahead and share now. So this was uh, the gift that a very, very special leadership team member who joined us shared with us. And I'll, I'll say more about her in a minute. Um, but as you can see, it says 35 years, Stampin' Up! Inspire, Create, and Share. And on the back, it actually has a code for a $35, I wonder why, um, product credit. So that was our gift, which I thought was very generous. Um, and I just even love the pin itself. And this was my name tag that I made for the event. We were all um, instructed by Brenda, which I thought was such a good idea to create our own name tag. And I didn't think I was gonna have time to do that. I thought I was gonna use my um, name tag from on stage last fall, which is where this lanyard came from. Uh, but thankfully I did have some time. And so I used my absolute favorite. Y'all know DSP is my favorite type of product and my favorite DSP certainly of the present and maybe of all time is this masterfully made um, kind of torn paper piecing DSP. So that's my background. And then I used um, our current alphabet dies to cut out my name there. So anyway, um, let's see. I guess I'll start at the very beginning. A very good place to start, right? So the event started with introductions. And um, like I said, we had an extra special member of the leadership team join us, um, really more than a member of the leadership team. So 
Sarah Douglas, Stampin' Up's CEO and daughter of the company's founder or co-founder, Shelly Gardner, was our special guest. And I just, I don't even know what to say. Like I can't say enough and I don't want to say too much because I don't want to sound sycophantic, but I guess to give you some context, there's very few people who I follow online just for lack of time and you know, social media is not uh, my favorite thing. Um, I think there's good things about it, but it's not uh, like how I spend much of my time. And so I don't follow a lot of people, but there are just a couple people who I follow because um, they are doing things that I am interested in doing and they're doing it in a way that I really appreciate. And one of, I can think of two people, honestly, maybe three that come to mind um, is Sarah Douglas. And I really started following her more closely because I knew of her as again, you know, the co-founder's daughter. Um, the other founder was actually her aunt. It was Shelly and her sister who started the company 35 years ago. So, um, you know, family run business. So I knew she was part of the family. I knew she was the current CEO. Um, but I really started watching her weekly videos, which are Tuesdays at two o'clock mountain time. If you go to her um, social media, her Facebook page specifically, um, she shares videos. And I found those during the pandemic when I think many of us were looking for more content, um, looking for more inspiration. And that's what it was for me. It was uh, a source of inspiration, a source of community. And I've been watching them, I think nearly every week since. If I missed them live, then I um, watch them on replay, but I love watching live when I can because um, then we can comment and ask questions. And I just, I really admire Sarah for so many reasons, one of which just is how transparent she is. And I think the company as a whole um, through her leadership is really open with us who work with them or just even who um, source from them as customers. So, you know, you don't have to just be a demonstrator. Uh, we do get additional like inside access, at least to sneak peeks and things like that. But I don't think there's much, if anything, that they tell us that they wouldn't eventually tell customers. It's just that, um, you know, we will sometimes see those things early. But um, that transparency, I just think, uh, goes a long way in building trust and um, and helping us, you know, get to know these people who we work with, uh, but usually don't get a chance to meet. So Sarah is always at these annual events, but there's hundreds and thousands of people at these events. So the really unique thing about this opportunity was it was about 35 of us, believe it or not, it worked out quite perfectly um, in that way. And so it was a really intimate setting to get to connect with her. So um, she had been there for a few minutes before the event officially got started, but I was helping out, like I mentioned, many of us did um, in coordinating, uh, really just collecting and then later sorting the annual catalog swap, which was part of the event I'll get to. Um, and so I had seen her from across the room, um, getting to meet other people, but didn't get to officially uh, meet her personally until later. And then I did, and I'll, I'll tell you more about that. I know I keep saying like, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. I'm trying to trying to do things chronologically so that I'm not just like, oh yeah, and then this happened. Oh, and to go back, that happened. Although I'm sure I'm gonna do that. Cause like I said, still very much processing. Um, so then Brenda shared some of the current uh, happenings with Stampin' Up. Um, Cause again, she was running this like her team meeting. And so um, she shared some of those things that you know people may not have noticed yet or may not have known yet because she is part of the um, the leadership group that gets even more early access to information than those of us who aren't quite at that level yet. Um, she then uh, had the opportunity to share recognition, um, which is often a part of team meetings and I think an important part to encourage one another. And, um, and one of the things she did that I really appreciated um, was she mentioned, I hope this doesn't sound self-serving, but um, I, I'm sharing it not to to boast, but to really just thank Brenda for, again, her recognition and the encouragement of that. She shared how I did start uh, the Northish uh, Jersey SU Demonstrator Group about a year and a half ago. And, um, and, you know, I did start it, but it wouldn't have gone anywhere had people not replied <laughs> and engaged. And so it's really credit to the full group, but, um, but she, you know, called me out in a good way uh, or shouted me out for that. And that meant a lot to me, especially because it came up with Sarah later. Again, I'm like hinting at things I'm gonna get to. Um, but then the main part of the event was to stamp um, and to craft because you know it is stamping up and crafting is what brought us all together. So we had five stations um, and I hope Brenda doesn't mind that I'm sharing all this information about her event. Um, but you know, I think it's all good things. So, um, so yeah, so we had five stations. Um, four of them were projects designed by Brenda with consultation from some of her teammates, her downlines. And uh, she had her downlines leading 
each uh, table so that those of us who rotated around could, you know, ask questions and get some instruction. And it was lovely meeting her teammates. Um, I really enjoyed getting to know them a little better uh, or meeting some of them for the first time. Um, and uh, let's see, then the fifth table was Sarah's table. So I'm gonna show you first the projects that Brenda designed for us. And they all used product from the brand new, hasn't even been released yet, at least at the time of this recording, um, except for us demonstrators, um, the September to December 2023 mini catalog, which a lot of us call the holiday catalog, um, but it's fall, winter, um, and lots of the different holidays that happen throughout. And sometimes there's even like a little hint of spring in there. So, um, so it was really fun to get to see and use some of that brand new product. I had only just gotten my pre-order. It had come like a week prior, but I had been away on vacation. Um, and so I had just seen my pre-order the night before. I, so I was actually in Pennsylvania um, and was supposed to be in Pennsylvania through this event um, for my family's last week there to help them prepare to move and, you know, take our last walk down memory lane. Um, but this event was uh, cannot miss. So I actually, I considered driving in the morning of, but then that would have been a dangerously long day um, with too much sleep deprivation. So I drove in the night before from Pennsylvania, which is about a six, seven hour drive. Um, went to the event Saturday and drove home that night because then my dad's and really family's farewell parties were Sunday and morning and night. Um, and then I had to drive back Monday to be at work on Tuesday. So again, I've just been recovering uh, this week since and uh, still am. I, if you could see my room, it looks like a bomb went off. And um, so yeah, so where was I going with that? I had just seen <laughs> the first few things from the holiday catalog. Um, so it was exciting to see more at this event. So the first project my table mates and I made was this one. I can't even tell you the names of things because the catalog, like I said, is brand new. I can't even remember. But what I can tell you is these use decorative masks and I had noticed it in the catalog. It wasn't something I was planning to get. And I was so delighted using it that, you know, as often happens when you see it um, having been used or better yet, use it yourself, you get sold on it, whether you're, uh, budget allows or not. <laughs> so um, I say that jokingly, I, I never want anyone to spend money that they can't comfortably spend. But I'm just saying I, I myself can relate to wanting more than I maybe should. Um, and these masks are now on that wish list. Because you have one mask to create the petals of the sunflower. You have another mask to create the leaves, which I think there's a leaf hiding behind my sentiment here, which if you can't read says, knowing you brings joy to my heart. Um, and then there's two masks for the centers of the flowers. And that's where it really wowed me. So the first one is just the center, the full center of the flower, which right now looks really dark, but actually what you're seeing is this lighter um, version of the copper clay. So we very lightly did some copper clay on the whole center. I think that's how it worked. And then the second mask just allowed for this middle dot and these uh, little dots in the ring and this outer kind of u-shaped shadow and so when we went over it again with the copper clay obviously those parts got darker and so when we took it off we had this light ring with the little dots in it and I just had one of those moments if you've stamped before like when you you know stamp for the first time or for me like you know the six years later time um, and you get it just right it's like <gasps> and that's how this was for me with these masks and hopefully you can see too there's an embossing folder that we used it's um, a distressed kind of version of like our quadrifoil folder. Again, I'm sorry, I don't know the names of these things. I'll look them up and when I post pictures on my blog, I'll try to mention some of the, the product. Um, and I'll be doing my catalog launch party um, on September 6th, I think is when the catalog goes live. Um, sometime that first week of September. And so I can talk more about these things then, but you also have some some ribbon in here, obviously some layers on the card front. Um, we have just a, a you know white piece on the inside for writing your message on since it is this darker, um, I think it's, mossy meadow card base but you know here this is from the holiday catalog and this could be for any time of year you know it certainly looks autumnal um but it could be summer it could be spring um we actually saw some versions that i think it was sue um one of uh, brenda's downline who's leading the table did um that kind of reminded me of a poinsettia with this and she said that's what i was thinking of so i think you could even do something you know more traditionally christmas with this so a great set of products um, the next table we rotated to was this card, which I should open up because um, it's a little bit of a fancy fold. So this is a very wintry card. It's the polar bear sending ironically warm wishes. <laughs> and so I open that up. 
um, you get this great Z fold that shows off two different sides of the same sheet of DSP. And hopefully you can see this snowflake. You've got just some dots, but then also some full, uh, you know, detailed snowflakes floating down. And then this is just a piece of basic white cardstock that we tore to make it look like a snowbank. And so there you have that cute card. I think these polar bears um, should have a bottle that could be Coca-Cola. <laughs> if you remember those uh, old commercials for Christmas. All right, so then um, this was another delight to me. This card uses, um, I think it's the same DSP as the last card, just obviously different sheets. Um, and I think all this DSP from these last two cards at least, yeah, um, is from a upcoming pack of paper that is gonna be the Make a Difference product. So every holiday catalog, there's a product that $3 of the profits go towards a charity um, that's usually in line with the theme of whatever that product is. And so this time it's this paper, and I'm trying to remember what the charity is going to be. I'll have to share that in my um, my catalog launch because I can't remember right now, but I'll definitely share that because it's always good to give back. Um, and Stampin' Up! does a great job of that. So anyway, this stamp for this tree is actually bigger than what you see here, but that means you can have smaller trees, medium trees, or even bigger trees. And when you use the dies, so this, you know, was again, a much bigger tree because it's one stamp. But then when you use the dies, it cuts off, you know, the bottom boughs or sets of branches. And of course, because you have this little white border between them, it cuts it off such that you can't see that there was something there. So it doesn't look like, oh, she cut something off. It looks like it was meant to be this all the time. And then this is a little another die piece that can be like your popcorn or other garland strung across your tree. Um, I always like the idea of the popcorn uh, or like cranberry garland, although I never really understood how that lasted on a tree. In my house, the popcorn would not last. We love snacking on popcorn. My husband and I, that's like our thing most nights is to stand at the stove eating popcorn as it pops out of the pot. Um, but anyway, I really like the composition of this card and you've got some very sparkly embellishments on there that hopefully you can see on top of the tree there. Um, just like the last card had some uh, different colored sparkly embellishments on it. Hopefully you noticed those. If not, here it is again. How could you miss them, right? Um, I know on the video, it actually, it can be missed, but all right. And then, um, then I went to Sarah's table, but I'm going to come back to that one because there's so much to say about that. But, uh, the last table I went to was this card, which is really my style. So we stamped, uh, in the background here, and then this is just a beautiful piece of DSP, but I love these delicate die cuts coming off this banner. Um, the garden green, you can see uh, those pieces are all part of the banner. And then the lighter, I think this is probably, hmm, let me think. Um, we don't still have pear pizzazz, do we? What color green is that? Probably old olive. Uh, the old olive kind of holly leaf in the background. That was something additional, an additional die cut that we glued on the back. And then these are some new rhinestones coming soon to a catalog near you. <laughs> um, and they come with some other great embellishments. Uh, that could make for a great shaker card. My friend uh, Lauren, who I was just in a, a party with that I hosted, was saying um, could make a really good shaker card, and I agree. So I know I'm like hinting at a lot of things that you'll see in the annual catalog, but only like a week from now, maybe less, depending on when I post this, if I post this. <laughs> All right, so then I can't show you the projects from Sarah's table because this was another great gift she uh, brought for us. It was a kit from the kits collection, and it is yet to be released. Now I will say, if it's not released before the uh, new September to December 2023 mini catalog, there is a sneak peek of it in there. I had noticed it because I'm always looking for these things on the pages that advertise Paper Pumpkin and Kits Collection. I'm always looking for sneak peeks because they don't tend to show um, specific kits. They just uh, refer to those collections and then you shop them online. But they will show some, you know, pictures of people holding samples and things like that. Um, you know, different boxes for the kits. And sometimes you can see something that's coming. You usually see some things that you've already seen in the past, then sometimes you see maybe the next thing or two. And I was pretty sure I'd seen a new kit coming um, that is holiday themed. And so I wondered if that was the one she was gonna bring and it was, and I will just say, I love it. Um, I love so much about it, but the main thing I love about it is it's very versatile and inclusive because it accommodates for Christmas in lots of different places in the world, um, maybe lots of different climates and considering the different plants that you might adorn there. So maybe not just uh, your average pine Christmas tree with lights. So 
I can't share that yet. Um, I will share it as soon as I can. And again, you should see that coming soon to the online store under Kits collection. But um, getting to talk with Sarah was such a treat. So she was everything I thought she would be and more. <laughs> um, because again, I expected her to be open and honest because of the transparency that I've sensed from her online. Um, but you never know in person. And she was even more that way in person. And um, just so informal in a sense that, you know, she wasn't unprofessional, but she also wasn't acting like the CEO of the rest of us, you know, who are entry level um, participants in this company. She, she was so comfortable and made us so comfortable that I found myself even like saying some things that later I was like, I cannot believe I said that to the CEO. <laughs> like for instance, um, we were talking about um, the kits collection and how she does kit togethers on her uh, lives each week. It's not always a kit together, it can be different things. I actually was asking her like, how do you choose what it is each time? And she said, you know, it depends on, um, I think she said like, you know, what they have going on and coming out. Um, but she said that the kit togethers are actually not the most popular of the topics. And I asked her what are, and she said behind the scenes, I said, yeah, those are probably my favorite too. Um, but anyway, she said she would love to, you know, host classes cause she herself is a demonstrator, which I think just says so much about her and about the company that even the CEO would be a demonstrator herself. And, and she doesn't get, I asked, I said, you know, I've always wondered how that works. Cause there's a lot of employees that are demonstrators and I'm guessing you all don't get like, um, special perks just because you're also corporate employees and she said no no like you know they might see what's coming earlier than the rest of us do because they're part of that development but they don't get to use it with their customers because there's rules about that rules that they make and enforce so um so yeah so I just think that's such a great endorsement for the company um and again you know speaks to her character specifically that she would choose to do that but um she said you know as a demonstrator she'd like to host classes and I said well I'd I'd come. <laughs> It'd be a long commute because she lives in Utah. That's where the home office is. But, um, but yeah, she's, you know, she said she'd love to do that. And uh, I think she said something like, you know, but I don't know uh, if people would come or who would come. <laughs> Just like without thinking that I'm talking to the co-founder's daughter and the CEO. I was like, oh, what if you did them virtually? <laughs> And later I was like, did I really just presume to give her an idea? Um, but again, I think that just speaks to the approachability of her. Um, and hopefully to my enthusiasm more than my arrogance <laughs> that I just, you know, wanted to jump right in there and like brainstorm with her how she could make it work because I love um, trying to make this work myself and, and helping others to, to try to make it work if I can. So anyway, um, I'm trying to think what else we talked about while we were at her table. We had about a half hour there, so it went quickly. Um, I know I told her about how much I appreciated, you know, the kits again, like versatility and inclusivity and also just how, at least in even my short time with the company these last six-ish years, um, I guess going on like seven. But anyway, of course six is going on seven, but it's getting closer to seven is my point. Anyway, I shared with her that um, I've even seen in that short time how Stampin' Up! seems to have been intentional to do more to be inclusive and how I appreciate that. And she said, you know, that is something that they've been intentional about. So um, so anyway, I wanted to share that with her. She was also using her, uh, her usual uh, strategy that she shares online of let's see if I can get it right, sort, stamp, stick, and send. It's the four steps to stamping with Sarah, <laughs> lots of S's. <laughs> I don't know if she calls it four steps to stamping with Sarah, but that's what it is. Um, so, you know, you sort all the pieces for the different cards. This is when you're using kits, like paper pumpkins or kits collection kits, because it comes with the different pieces for the different designs. Um, then you stamp everything you're gonna stamp, like your sentiments or any images. And it is good to do that all at once. It's kind of like an assembly line. It just makes things more efficient. efficient. Um, and then you stick, you know, so using your different adhesives to adhere everything down to the card. And then you send them. You can't forget to send your cards, right? So um, anyway, she was kind of having us do that. And I shared with her that, you know, I've used that with my customers, giving her credit, of course, um, and how much they've appreciated that, especially beginners. But then even those of us who've been doing this a while longer. Um, so I just, you know, I really, my hope was to be a part of her feeling celebrated as much as she was there to be a part of making our celebration special because it really is her company and her family that have made all this possible. And so um, I didn't want it to be just about, you know, her there to give to us. I very much wanted it to be about 
us giving back to her for all that you know she and again her family and her colleagues have done so um so i was trying to find those opportunities to share that positive feedback with her and um and there's a lot of it so again if anything i was just trying to not share too much so that it didn't seem like overwhelming <laughs> um so let's see what else i'm sure i'll remember other things that came up uh in our conversation as a group with her uh stamping together but to stamp with sarah like what a treat um and then Let's see, so then we went into uh, a little Q&A time with her, and this is where I could probably go on and on and on, uh, trying to remember everything, and, and I do wanna remember everything, but already I'm forgetting. So this is when I was um, starting to sort um, with Brenda the annual catalog swaps, and so unfortunately I was having to multitask for some of the start of the Q&A. Um, and I'll go ahead and show those to you now so that you can uh, see those, and then we'll, we'll talk about the Q&A. But I, I have pictures of all of them. Sorry for the sound of the bag. Um, we had to put these in Ziploc bags to keep them organized. Um, so you can check out my blog for pictures of everyone's swap. Um, there were, like I said, about 35 of us there. I think there was about, uh, 24, 23, uh, annual catalog swaps. And we only, um, got 10. We only made 10 to swap with then, uh, an extra one to to show on the display board. So you only got 10 back. So I don't have them all here to show you, but I'm gonna start with mine. So let me open it up because it is an interactive fold or fancy fold at least. Um, all right, so this is the one that I made and I made three different versions because um, I only had so much DSP. Um, so you can again see pictures of those on my blog, but I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. It looks like there's a little smudge of glue. So I'll have to get my adhesive remover out. Hopefully you won't notice. Uh, but this is mine. Happy 35th anniversary, Stampin' Up. Ooh, I'm dropping things. There are, a lot of them are in plastic envelopes, so they're slippery. All right. So um, the team that I'm a part of, our name is, I think, the best name I've heard. I didn't come up with it, so I can say that. <laughs> um, but it's Partners in Craft. And so our mascot is the raccoon, because he looks like a little, uh, you know, criminal. <laughs> partners in crime, partners in craft with his little mask. I guess he could also look like a superhero. That would be a much more positive thing. But anyway, that's, I think, how it, uh, he came to be our mascot. So I particularly liked this one, but I have another one that has the turtle um, and another one that has the, I think it's a leopard from the Zany Zoo Suite, I think it's called. Um, and I used uh, stamps from the, oh, what's it called? I have it somewhere here. Um, it's like, here's to the guys kit. Um, this is a stamp set actually, um, where it has all these sentiments for, you know, different men in our lives. So actually the TH is from a brother. <laughs> um, but it was the, the, one of the only happy anniversaries I could find that was a, a current product. Um, there were a couple stamp sets from the catalogs, but, um, they were much smaller. And so this was the right size. And this is again, our alphabet stamp set, cause it has the numbers. Those are up on foam, uh, adhesive sheets and then dimensionals on these. So you can't maybe see the dimension, but uh, he's up on dimension. And then people were asking where I got the Stampin' Up! logo from. That came from the invitation cards that demonstrators can buy as a supply item. And all that is on a window sheet so that way you can open this up. Hopefully it's going to open smoothly for me here with you watching. Probably not. I'll, I'll be able to do one side at a time at least. <laughs> um, so it's a bit of a display card. Whoop, hang on. I don't want to break it. So let me just do this. Uh, more carefully looking at it because doing things backwards is hard. <laughs> All right. When you fold these sides in, sometimes they get stuck on the adhesive holding down my window sheet on the center spine here. So there you've got all the animals celebrating. You've got your raccoon, but also your koala, your aardvark, armadillo. I don't know the difference, your dog. I just realized these are kind of like Australian animals um, oh, an elephant. I guess that's not Australian. So maybe they're from all over the world. I was going to say maybe maybe this is for our uh, demonstrators down under uh, to be represented. But anyway, so it stands up like this and can be a display card. So that was my swap for the annual catalog. Uh, we also did, again, a holiday catalog swap, and I'll show those to you too. Um, I'm hoping people label these so I can give them credit. Okay, so this one, let me let me try to make slightly more organized piles here. Like I said, this room is the biggest mess I've ever seen it be. Um, all right, so this is from Emma Kaplan. She is one of Brenda's downline and also part of our um, Northish Jersey SU Demonstrators group. You are so kind. Let's see, just ready on the inside for a good long message. So lovely. 
Then we've got, they're all in envelopes, so this is gonna take a little while. Like I said, feel free to fast forward, pause, skip, whatever you need to do. This is from Anita Ritchie. I don't know her yet, so she must be on Brenda's team. I'm not sure if I got to meet her on the day. Um, there were a couple people who I got to kind of meet in passing, and so um, I'll have to go back and look at pictures and try to put faces to names for some of my new friends, but um, beautiful little like almost flower basket it looks like. Hopefully you can see the texture there with an embossing folder. Oh, and a little stamping on the inside. All right. If they say what they used on it, I guess I'll share with you. Um, so this one uses the two-tone flora layering leaves and the cane weave 3D embossing folder. Thanks for putting that on there, Anita. All right, this one I recognize. This one is from our host, Brenda Miller. And one of the things Sarah did um, at the end of the event is choose one of the swaps to take back to the home office to put on a display that they have there with one card from every 35 for 35 event from this year. And Brenda's was one of the ones that she, um, like one of, I think four that she singled out um, to then choose from. And so it's not the one that ultimately went home with her, but it was, I guess, an honorable mention you could say. Um, and I really like this one too. It says sending sunshine and good feelings your way. It's like the Jersey Shore. This was another honorable mention. Um, this is from my friend, Mary Bradford. I love her style. Um, so I really liked this card too. It was interesting. So I actually got to stand with Sarah while she chose because she was walking over to the swap board. I, I had said to Brenda, you know, has she chosen her swap to take back yet? And she was like, oh no, let's ask her, you know, um, when she wants to do that. And she was like, oh, I think I need help. So I was like, oh, well, I don't know what I can do to help, but I'll be here with you. <laughs> and so I stood with her and just tried really hard not to say anything. And at one point I said to her, I said, I'm not saying anything because I know who did what. And I, you know, don't want to prime you or bias you. But, um, but yes, this is my friend, Mary Bradford. Um, and it says explore, dream, discover. It looks like she ripped the paper on those. Well done. Cause those are small to have to rip without ripping into the sentiment. And then, Oh, I didn't see, I haven't even, I've had these for a week. You know it's been busy when I haven't done follow-up or even really fully experienced a Stampin' Up! experience of a lifetime. <laughs> I haven't even opened these yet. I haven't had a chance. Um, time to make new memories. That means a lot to me right now because, I mean, not like she made this for me uh, or with this in mind, but um, like I said, my family is transitioning. Um, my parents and my sister are moving from Pennsylvania to Florida, and I live in New Jersey. I lived in Florida and they lived in Pennsylvania. And now I've moved up to New Jersey right next door and they're moving to Florida. Like, should I take a hint? No, it's not personal. <laughs> I promise we're a close family. Um, but yeah, so, you know, times of transition are bittersweet. All right, so then this one, let's see who did this. This one is by Lynn Hunt Phones. So she uh, she lives like way south in Jersey, but she's still part of our Northish Jersey uh, group. Um, she was actually at on stage last fall as well. I didn't get a chance to meet her there, but one of our other group members um, actually like randomly uh, roomed with her. They both needed a roommate and so they roomed together and now she's a part of our group. She comes to all our events as far as she has to drive. And I love this card. It's a shaker. Can you hear it? So it's got a bunch of, uh, hopefully you can see, they're going to slide as soon as I, all these multicolored sequins. Um, I really like this card. This is one of my favorites. She always does some sort of, you know, fancy fold or something. Oh, and happy birthday. I think it's time for a celebration. I love these dies that, that she used to cut out, you know, even the, the piece on the inside, really special. Well done, Lynn. So glad you're a part of our group. Um, so this is the beautiful balloons bundle. Um, she even lists all the paper, the DSP, wow. Um, some special things. You have the gold celebration specialty DSP and the holographic trio specialty DSP. Where is that? Oh, on the, on the quote unquote ribbon on the bottom of the balloon. That's where that is. Um, I won't point out all the other things, but those special things I wanted to point out. Um, and the accessories are the adhesive back sequins trio, the pastel adhesive back sequins, Neutrals adhesive back sequins, iridescent shaker circles, that's what the inside is, loose silver sequins, oh my gosh, so many things, 2022 to 2024 in color baker's twine pack, um, so yeah, wow, lots going on there, and thank you for listing out all of that for us, Lynn, above and beyond, above and beyond, all right, 
trying to keep these things together. All right, so next up, this is from Kathy Davis. Did I meet Kathy Davis? I think I might have. I think that might have been one of the people who I met just kind of in passing. Um, but she's someone who I didn't know before this event, I don't think. Unless we met at the planning meeting. There were a few people who met um, virtually to plan this event with Brenda. So a thank you card with some beautiful 3D flowers. Love that. Let's see, is there an inside? I mean, there's always an inside, but is there anything on the inside? Yes, another 3D flower. Not too 3D, so it can close, but I love that. All right, so then this is from Deborah Storbeck, I believe. And this has more of that holographic trio specialty papers. So I find Deborah always does, you know, things with kind of like different product, like maybe not the product that most people are gonna um, do things with. And so I really like that we get to see some different things from her. So look at that, the spaceship with that holographic paper. Hopefully you can see all the different like iridescent colors shining on that, it's not just metallic. And oh, it's a fancy, oh, I love a flip-flop card. Okay, check that out. How fun, oh, so I guess it's supposed to be like this. Love the flip-flop card. And what's it say? If I had a star for every time you brighten my day, I'd have an entire galaxy. I love that. That is so well done. Thank you, Deborah. So that's the Reach for the Stars um, stamp set and uh, Stargazing DSP, as well as, like I said, the Holographic Trio specialty paper, um, the Reach for the Stars dies, um, and Rhinestone Basic Jewels. Lovely. Or again, just like, I mean, it's beautifully done, but, you know, it's not lovely like a floral card. It's just like, it's a more unique subject matter, you know, or, um, yeah, just, I like that Stampin' Up does that. They, you know, they do a lot of flowers and things like that, but then they also will do sets, you know, for people with different interests um, and things that are maybe more gender neutral or traditionally masculine as well as not traditionally feminine, so. So then this is from Barbara Dykehouse, another member of our group. And I love this bundle, as I think you know. Um, and she's really outdone herself with, you know, making a full little scene here um, with lots of like dimension and texture. This is a distressed brick. I don't know if that's what it's called, but uh, perfect background. And this DSP, as I think Sarah said in one of her lives, does make great like um, sidewalk, kind of mosaic sidewalk pattern. Oh, and she stamped on the inside too. Um, happy birthday, let's get together at a cafe perhaps. So yeah, I really like that one. Um, oh, there's more, oh my gosh, this is gonna be such a long video. If you watch this, please comment uh, because I wanna thank you. <laughs> I wanna thank you and I wanna know who else is as interested in these things as me. All right, so this is from, make sure I say this right, Stasha Sloma, who's a member of our group. Um, you know, I, I met these people virtually before I ever met them in person. And so I read their names before I heard them pronounced. And sometimes, you know, that initial impression you have will get stuck in your memory, even when you're corrected. And so she's, you know, graciously told me, I've asked her and she's told me how to pronounce her name a couple of times. Um, but now I think I just have like that nervousness um, that becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy where I'm like, am I going to say it right? And then I say it wrong. So I, I think it's Stasha Sloma. Anyway, I really liked her color choice on this. Um, really simple, beautiful card. Your kindness is so appreciated. You know, it's hard to do simple cards well. They can look plain or basic. Um, and I think especially to use white card base, which I use a lot. And I'll admit, like, I don't think I always strike that balance of it being simple without being plain or basic. This I think is a great example of, you know, a simpler card, not super simple. You know, there's still quite a bit going on, but um, definitely not plain, definitely not basic, really, really beautiful. All right, so that was all the annual catalog swap. Let me double check the number on that, but I think that was 10. Let's see. Sorry while I count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. All right, and then there was the holiday catalog swap. So again, I'll show you mine. Um, I think the best version of mine I put up on the swap board, <laughs> and so I didn't get that one back, which is fine. Um, so this is not as good uh, in my opinion, but you'll see a picture of my original because I did take pictures before I went to the event, thankfully. Um, this was really quick because literally I did this the morning of the event. <laughs> like I said, I'd gotten home the night before, gotten my pre-order that had come while I was away, 
Um, and I thought, dare I do it? And I dared. And so the morning of the event, I put this together really quickly. I'd been brainstorming, but you never really know if your idea is going to work until you're putting it together. And this was like plan C, um, because the first couple things I had wanted to do weren't really working for me and time was of the essence. So this is what I came up with, um, but it got to show off some special new products like these. Uh, I'm not going to remember the name again. Watch my catalog launch party video and we'll go over these things hopefully. But the brushed metallic um, cards and envelopes. These come with beautiful envelopes to match. And then this is one of the specialty DSPs. And I actually used an annual catalog um, stamp set. What's it called? I think I have it here somewhere. Somewhere in the mess. It's the one with the birds. Here it is. The Sweet Songbirds. Uh, to say a little note of thanks. Um, so a little pun there with the music notes. But uh, the version I like better used the um, Cherry Cobbler to match the DSP. Um, what were these? They were uh, adhesive backed pearls. And um, and this used the gold because I ran out of the Cherry Cobbler. But you know, it still works because the gold obviously. I just, I liked the way it brought the red up um, onto the card base. And you get to still see the music notes on the inside. So that was my swap. Let's take a look at everyone else's. Again, not everyone else's. I think for the uh, holiday catalog swap, there were only 12 people who swapped, or at least 12 projects. Some people swapped multiple projects within the swap, so it could have been fewer people, uh, but 12 projects. So um, I got, I guess I got all but one or two back. Um, so I'm going to save this one for last, but otherwise I'm just going to go through them as I have them here. All right, so this is once again from Deborah Storbeck. And sorry if I am mispronouncing any, everyone's names, especially last names, because, you know, once I meet these people in person, I'm hopefully saying their first names correctly. But, you know, very rarely do people introduce themselves, I feel like, first and last name. <laughs> um, so I don't always hear their last names and know what they are. All right. So here we have a Halloween card, which I love to see because it's something different. And I don't do a lot for Halloween, so it's good to have some samples. Um, so this is the Bag of Bones stamp set and dies. Um, also the Them Bones DSP and the Glow in the Dark specialty paper. Where's that, I wonder? I bet I bet this skeleton is on the Glow in the Dark specialty paper, um, which I showed in my unboxing video of my pre-order. It was probably the most thrilling thing to me because it really does glow. Um, and then also the Glow in the Dark Bats and Ghost. So those embellishments will glow in the dark. Um, it's daytime or else I would, you know, turn off the lights and show you, but the lights are already off, so we're not gonna be able to see that right now. But no bones about it. You're a sweet friend. That's really fun. Happy Halloween. So that's one. Again, I love seeing, you know, things that aren't always, uh, you know, the things that I'm going to get or at least get first. And sometimes it does make you realize that you now want it <laughs> or need it too. All right, so this one though, uh, I already knew I liked. I haven't gotten much of it yet. I did get the specialty paper from this suite, but my favorite Christmas carol of all time is Oh Holy Night. And there is a suite called Oh Holy Night in the new catalog. So this is from June Craig. Sorry for mispronouncing your last name, June from our group. And it says Merry Christmas and then opens up. Oh my gosh, I haven't even seen this yet. Wow, glory to God in the highest. Beautifully done, June. And this is the first time I'm seeing this DSP, which I've been very interested in. So love that nativity scene. Um, really fun fold too, and beautifully done. The gold embossing and everything. So it's the Night Divine Bundle. Um, the Star Trinkets, I missed that. Oh, so this is one of the embellishments from that suite above the scene of the Holy Family there. Um, what else? I think that's I think that's all of the products to note but wow I love that that's just that's product I was interested in it's you know a fancy fold which I love that's really that's an exciting one to me again we all have the things that you know get us most excited um, but all of this is is so exciting to see um, so another from Kathy Davis this is a fun one um, again just kind of a different set maybe for someone who likes to ski or just sightsee um, happy holidays. And then you've got, ooh, a double mat on the inside. That is elegant. Um, cause you know, it's a white card base. She could have just left it white, but she added two mats to create a lovely border there. That's really special, Kathy. Thank you. All right. This one looks like another one from Deborah Storbeck. So 
this is an example. Deborah did two holiday swaps and an annual catalog swap. Maybe she did two of those too. Wow, she was busy. All right, so this looks like another interactive card. Let's see. Let it snow. We've got this fuzzy ribbon, which is kind of got sparkles on it. I don't know if you can see that. Looks like maybe you can. Those same sparkly embellishments as the polar bear card in what looks like polar bear footprints, actually. And then, oh, yep, there's the polar bear. <laughs> and it looks like this is a gift card holder, maybe. Is that what this is? Let me see. I don't want to break it, but yeah, so it looks like you might be able to slide a gift, a gift card in there, I'm guessing. Warm wishes. I think these are maybe um, a memory and more card pack. I wonder how she had enough to do all the swaps. Maybe there were, you know, slightly different designs, kind of like um, my annual catalog swap had to be, but really fun. Let me see. Oh, she'll say here what she what she used. So it's the Very Cute Stamp Set. Berry Christmas DSP. Okay, so it's not... Oh, and then Berry Christmas Memory and more card pack. Yeah, okay. Um, the double oval punch and the Berry Cute punch and then adhesive back glitter sequins. So there you go. All right, next up, another one from the uh, Stars at Night bundle and looks like hybrid embossing folder. Ooh, I didn't recognize that this uh, Oh Holy Night Suite had a hybrid embossing folder. This is from Carol Davison. I think I might've met her in passing. She's one of Brenda's downline. Um, let me see if there's any other product to mention. Just some of the same things from the last Oh Holy Night card. Although this also has the Knight of Navy and gold glitter ribbon, which I'm excited to see. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. Wishing you the best and brightest holiday season. Look at those embellishments in the center of those die cuts. And then this is that embossing folder. Some more embellishments as well. Let's see, does this open? Oh yeah, okay. Lovely. So this is the other bundle in that suite. It's a double bundle suite. So you have kind of the nativity scene and then the stars scene. All right, we got another polar bear. Very cute bundle. This is from Fran Trichetta. Fran took so many good photos that day and I'm so grateful because I did not get a lot of photos. <laughs> um, and that's something I'm always trying to balance, like being present in the moment and documenting for memory's sake because my memory needs it. Um, but it's so easy to go like too far one way or the other. So I'm really grateful for her for taking photos because I didn't. Um, so thank you, Fran. And this one opens up. Lots of place to write your message, but I really like this DSP. Did she say what this DSP is? Winter Meadow. I think that might have been one of the online exclusive products if not it's in the holiday catalog coming up but i love that watercolor snowy forest scene all right another halloween card oh good i was hoping i got this one so this is again from barbara dykehouse from our group and um the only non stampin up product on it is something stampin up doesn't sell so you know no fault there but it's a wobble to make our little skeleton dance how fun is that so boo to you and it's got more of the um glow in the dark embellishments whatever those were called oh and it's a flip-flop oh my gosh eat shriek and be scary which i think is such a fun sentiment and then look this stamp set has not only skeleton humans but skeleton dogs and cats which is kind of sad but kind of cute <laughs> so i was just talking to my friend lauren about that too we were like we really like the skeleton cat even though it's a little sad um, all right, so then what do we have next? I think this is going to be another Lynn Hunt phones because she's got her really great detailed, yep, her detailed uh, supply list in here. All right, so here it is. And I'll show you, or I'll tell you everything we've got going on on this one. Ooh, sending wishes for a wonderful, joyous season. So this is the Wishes All Around Bundle. Um, sparkling Snowflake and Stylish Shapes dies. She's got some vellum uh, on there. Where's the, oh yeah, for the, the Snowflake background. Um, and then lots of accessories again. Iridescent Pearl Basic Jewels, Basic Combo Pack, uh, Oh, sorry, uh, the Snowflake Sky 3D embossing folder, the white iridescent ribbon. So yeah, 
lovely. And I love the, uh, you know, the less traditional color palette on this one. Um, with the purples and pinks. I think that's bubble bath and fresh freesia. Am I right on that? Yes. So many fun things. All right. And then this card, I think must be Brenda, yes, because it's very similar to the one that we made, but probably just stepped up a little bit. We had to, you know, keep our stamping um, a little simpler because we had, like I said, just a half hour at each station and, and had to keep moving around. But oh yeah, and it's a fancy fold. So you might think this looks familiar. Merry Christmas. And then check it out. Tidings of comfort and joy. And is this a pocket? No. Oh yes. Yes, a gift card holder pocket. Love that. Love that. So there you go. Thank you, Brenda. All right, so that's, I think, all but one very special one that I'm getting to. Let me count again. Let's see. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. All right, so last one. So I have a friend in our group named Sharon. Let me see if her last name is on here. It's Sharon Secor Abrams which I might be mispronouncing. And um, she's quite the artist. And so I had a feeling that hers would be the one chosen by Sarah. And wouldn't you know, it was. So here it is. It was from the Holiday Catalog Swap. Some similar product that you've seen. And I think she just goes by Sharon Abrams actually. Um, but as beautiful as the front is, it's all about what's inside. So check this out. Isn't that special? Beautiful, beautiful ornament hanging in the center of that. So that was the chosen card by Sarah. I don't think anyone was surprised. Um, so congratulations, Sharon. And here's those envelopes I was telling you about to go with it. Um, so awesome swaps. So I was uh, helping Brenda with those while the Q&A got started. I'm gonna pull up uh, the list of questions that I submitted, although there were other questions people asked and I'll try to remember some of that good information to you. Um, and I hope there's nothing that I shouldn't share. There was nothing that Sarah said, you know, don't share this with anyone except for um, that kit that we used at her stamping table until that uh, is shared publicly. Um, we can't share that, you know, with customers because obviously that's Stampin' Up's prerogative. But, um, but yeah, hopefully there's nothing that I shouldn't say. Um, certainly nothing negative that I would need not to say. But anyway, um, so yes. So I had sent in, Sarah had asked, for our questions for the Q and A in advance so that she could prepare accordingly. And so I had sent nine questions <laughs> through Brenda. Um, I assume those got to Sarah um, because she answered like seven of them back to back. <laughs> um, she said she actually hadn't had a chance to really look through them. So she was just answering them in the moment. But, um, but yeah, the first one was, what was it like growing up in Stampin' Up? And what's it like running the family business now? I was trying to think of questions that, you know, would be uniquely appropriate to ask from Sarah, things that you know maybe only she would know or she would know best, um, and things that maybe hadn't already been shared, which was hard to do because again, this is a good thing, the company and her in particular are just so transparent that I was like, oh, they've talked about that before. You know, there's this time and place to, to ask that, uh, you know, that'll come up again. And so it was like, you know, what's really gonna be, um, you know, most opportune at this time in this place with this person? So. That was my first question. And um, I'm trying to remember what she said. Again, some of these early questions I was still having to, uh, to multitask through, but um, I know she talked about some of the early roles she had in the company. Um, she was on the pick line uh, filling orders, which she still does from time to time. Again, like such a servant leader, like when orders get backed up, you'll see like a video of her on social media and, and her mom, the founder, who's now a board member, I think, um, and, you know, and all these other people from leadership and just, you know, from different roles in the company stepping in, um, you know, it reminds me of that Disney philosophy of like, there's no job too small for even the highest employee. Um, and so she'll be, you know, out there. In fact, you might've seen my uh, post, my unboxing post from, you know, maybe a month or a few months back um, where there was a little note in my box that said like, you're the 90 something uh, box we packed today or, you know, for this promotion launch or something like that. And it had her signature on it, a bunch of other people's signatures on it who worked on my product, just like so personal, such personalized uh, attention um, to, you know, to us, <laughs> uh, demonstrators and customers like. But anyway, she had done that, I guess, you know, more than just uh, as needed. Um, that had been one of her roles in the company. Um, 
she also talked, I think this was an answer to a later question, but she talked about remembering being like, you know, with her mom and her aunt in one of their homes, um, you know, surrounded by color swatches on the floor uh, when she was a lot younger, you know, as a kid growing up, uh, helping out when they were maybe just starting out the business or turning it into what it became. Um, and running the family business now, I think, you know, she said is, you know, busy, <laughs> um, but good. Uh, the next question was a little bit more about that. I asked, what's a day in the life of Stampin' Up! CEO like? Um, and then in parentheses, I had, you know, added, what do you do that we maybe don't see or hear about? Because again, we get to see and hear about quite a lot from her. Um, and she actually had Marilee, who I think was introduced as her assistant, but who also seems to do much more than that. I mean, that's probably a very busy job in and of itself, but she talked later about how I think compliance and legal uh, is maybe under her as well. So she seems to do a lot. Um, so she was there. It was lovely to meet her as well. Um, I was trying not to interrupt her too much. It looked like she might've actually been having to work while she was there. Um, but I did get to introduce myself and just thank her for coming. Um, but she actually, I think Sarah said, you know, Marilee, you can actually speak more to this. And so she shared a little bit more just about how hard Sarah works, um, and how much she cares, which is evident, so evident in, again, all that she does and the ways she does it. And, um, and in her emotion, like as someone who, um, where's their heart on their sleeve, uh, talk about me. It seems like Sarah has that same tender heartedness, um, which I can really relate to. Um, because as Marilee was sharing, you know, she, I hope she wouldn't mind me saying, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of in this. Um, she, you know, got a little teary eyed. I think, I don't know why I imagine maybe just cause Marilee was, um, you know, recognizing all that she does and how she does it. Um, so anyway, so then, um, let's see, what did, what did she answer next? Um, oh, so, um, I had asked if you had unlimited resources, what else would you do through Stampin' Up? Um, and this is one where, again, I hope it's okay to share. Cause she said like, Oh, she had to kind of think about it. And, um, she said that, you know, these were some ideas she hadn't even like shared with the board yet. <laughs> now, of course, because like, they're not necessarily ideas she's working on. So like, don't hear me say like, this is what's coming. I mean, there were no like secret, uh, future plans shared with us. Um, and that's not what it was meant to be. It was just meant to be like a dreaming question. And so it was really interesting to hear some of her dreams. Unsurprisingly, they were about giving back to people. Again, that's, um, one of Stampin' Up's values and he's their first value is that people are first and you really, really see that lived out through Sarah. Um, and a big part of that is they're making a difference, uh, initiatives, whether it's through product give back, like I talked about earlier or days of service, um, or, you know, partnering with, um, the heart of Stampin' Up. Uh, which is an application that demonstrators can submit to partner with Stampin' Up to do their own charitable work. So just all sorts of things and even more um, that Stampin' Up does. And so she talked about some things that she would want to do to expand that. Um, like, again, I hope it's okay to share uh, just dreams, but she said she would love to have a crafting program for high schoolers, something like Cards for Kindness or Kindness Cards where uh, high schoolers could come and craft together and then have um, cards to share to spread kindness to others. Um, she also talked about having a college program that would be less the creative part of crafting and more the business part of crafting, teaching about the business. Um, and um, again, just doing more with, you know, the making a difference initiatives, I think um, she was talking about in answer to that question. So um, that was really interesting, really inspiring. And then, um, let's see, what was next? Um, oh, I asked, what do you think would be most helpful for demonstrators to know or understand that we might not? And again, I wasn't surprised by her answer. It was something to the effect, I, I definitely don't want to put words in her mouth. I'm really just, you know, paraphrasing in my own words, what I remember of what I understood her saying. Um, but the sentiment was, know that Stampin' Up! has you in mind in all that they do. And so, you know, what could seem frustrating or disappointing is not the intention. You know, the intention is never to make the work that we do as demonstrators harder. It's to make it easier and better. Um, and everything is done with that in mind. Um, and I, I get that from the company, but I know that there are, are others um, who maybe don't always feel that way. Um, and maybe, you know, it's just cause I'm early on and I tend to be naive. <laughs> um, but you know, it was interesting having 
that be the CEO's response to that question? And I, so I really hope that for the people who were there, for maybe the people who are hearing this, um, who are demonstrators, who have been demonstrators, um, can really believe that because it was said with deep conviction. And again, even, you know, some visible emotion um, that Stampin' Up! recognizes the value of its team and its demonstrators. Um, and, you know, sometimes they have to do things to move the business forward. Other times there are things outside of their control and they're always trying to include us and, um, and, you know, have those things go as well for us as they can. So good to, good to hear, uh, I hope. Um, let's see, I asked, what do you think is one of the most helpful business strategies for demonstrators? And for not having thought about it, like, I mean, again, I expect great things from Sarah. I've never not uh, seen or had reason to not expect great things from Sarah, but I mean, that could be a hard question to answer on the spot. And she was just like coming up with like one great thing after another. Um, but the one that really stayed with me was to be yourself, be true to yourself, find what works for you. And the other thing that she said was, um, again, that, that really stood out to me because there were a lot of things, but it was find the one who needs you and the rest will follow. Um, cause one thing she had talked about earlier was how something she's really passionate about is, let's see, what was the phrase? Eradicating loneliness. And she shared a story of sharing that with some colleagues recently and how that really helped them understand her, um, her reasons for doing things or maybe not doing things. I don't know. We didn't get the full, the full context, but, um, you know, when she kind of came out with like, I just want to eradicate loneliness. <laughs> they were like, Oh, now we get it. Um, and what a, I don't even know what the right word is. You know, what a, a beautiful purpose. Um, it really is so much more than stamps, ink, and paper. I know I've had moments where I think I'm selling paper. <laughs> um, during the pandemic, I remember thinking that, you know, when people were having so many challenges, including financial challenges, I thought, you know, what a luxury to be selling a crafting hobby and to be asking people to buy paper, um, as much as you know, I love paper, but it really is so much more than that. Um, it always, you know, has been for me. And again, I think I've just gotten nervous that that's not what it is I'm, um, I'm really offering to other people, um, but it is, and that is valuable. It's the opportunity to connect, um, to have this community through creativity, which are some of my favorite things. Um, I love creating and I love creating in community. Like I always say, that's not just something I say, that's, I say it because it's true. Um, and so anyway, I just uh, really resonated with Sarah's uh, mission and vision to eradicate loneliness. She said at one point, she said, um, you know, something like she was talking about, you know, a lot of what we're hearing, especially post pandemic about the epidemic of loneliness. And she said, and we have the answer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> creating a community. That's the answer. It's certainly a great answer. Um, so anyway, um, I really liked that though, again, in, in terms of, um, answering, you know, a business strategy, uh, cause it's so much more than a business and it's so much more than a strategy, but you know, to find that one who needs you, uh, that's the heart of it, helping others. Um, that's, I think, you know, in other words, what the heart, the statement of the heart, uh, that Stampin' Up! has says, you know, it ends with, in this, we make a difference, um, by sharing what we love with others. Um, so then I asked, uh, you know, these are kind of in order of like importance to me. Um, what are some of the most enjoyable places you've traveled around the world with Stampin' Up! or otherwise? Because I know that Sarah has the privilege of getting to, well, it's work. I, I'm sure it's a lot of work, more than I even know. But it also seems like a privilege to travel the world on like the incentive trips the demonstrators can earn, which I haven't yet, but hope to someday. Um, and this was another thing we talked about actually at the stamping table because I was asking her if it was her first time in New Jersey. She said it wasn't, but she hadn't really remembered exactly when and where she'd been here before. I'm guessing it was when she was, you know, much younger, not that she's old. Um, but, uh, you know, I asked where else she'd been on these 35 for 35 events. Cause again, they're taking place around the world. And, um, 
And so anyway, in answer to this question, she said, you know, it's really not about the places, it's about the people. Again, this is just showing how much that value of the company is a personal value of hers as well, that people are first. Um, but she did say in terms of places like from the incentive trips, Japan had really stood out to her. And that has been rising to the top of my list recently. And, you know, she only bumped it up higher by the, the good things she said about it. Um, just talking about how unique it is, especially to someone, I assume, coming from the West. Um, but I've, I've been hearing a lot of people just speak really highly of Japan recently. And it was not a place I didn't, it wasn't a place I didn't want to go. It just was a place I didn't know much about. So I wasn't really drawn there. Um, but I'm certainly being drawn there more and more as I hear more and more about it. Um, and she said something funny about, she's, Again, I hope this is okay to share. She's never felt more like a loud American than she did in Japan. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I'd probably feel that way too. And I don't think she is a particularly loud American. Uh, and I hope I'm not, although uh, maybe I am. Again, maybe at least in a, a place like Japan, I would be. Um, but anyway, we had a good laugh, all of us, about that. Um, and then I asked, what do you most like being asked about or talking about in regards to Stampin' Up? Um, to try to get at like the things that maybe I didn't know to ask um, that she again would you know really want to share with us and you know at that point if we didn't already know just even from the day you would know she said what do you think it is and we all said people and, and of course that's what it was and she you know just um, talked about how you know the different people she gets to meet and stories she gets to hear um, through her work in Stampin' Up just means so much to her. And, uh, and of course you want to share the things that, that do mean a lot to you. Again, we share what we love. Um, so then some other people's questions, um, well, actually there were a couple questions that she didn't ask, uh, that I had sent in. So then I asked those when she kind of opened it up to, um, questions beyond the ones that we had sent in. Uh, the first that I asked was how did Stampin' Up! grow over the last 35 years to what it is today? And, um, I was having trouble wording that question, but what I was trying to, you know, hear more about is like, how did it go from like, you know, your mom and aunt's house um, and whatever it was then, because again, I, I wasn't a part of it then. So I wanted to hear a little bit more about kind of the beginning of it and then like evolve, you know, into now this, you know, major international corporation. And she did talk a little bit about some of those steps along the way, like, you know, the bigger, I guess, leaps um, from like, originally, I guess it was other people's product that they sold just in a unique way, I'm guessing through catalogs. Um, and then, you know, eventually making the switch to, uh, well, she said it started with, you know, having just one exclusive artwork stamp set. And then people's response to that, you know, they were so interested in this unique product that then they, you know, made the transition eventually to what it is now, which is exclusively um, Stampin' Up! artwork product. Um, I mean, there's a few products like Versamark um, that they'll partner with. Um, to have the watermark stamp pad, but you know, all the stamp sets, the dies, the punches, the DSP. I mean, you've heard me talk about it before. They'll have artists make real fine art, you know, paintings and, and graphic design. Um, and then they scan or photograph that and it becomes our designer series paper. So, so yeah, so it was interesting to hear some of that history. And again, some of just her personal history, uh, being part of not just the business, but the family that created that, like, um, you know, she said she named the color Earth and Elements, which is no longer a color. I hope I'm getting that name right. But she, she got to name that and she said that like, you know, that was something that had uh, been a proud moment for her growing up. And um, she talked about, again, the, the, I think that was when she talked about the color swatches on the floor because they went from having like 12, she said pretty basic colors initially to then having like, what is it, like 48 um, color f colors in the four different color families. Um, I guess it's actually like 50 colors we have now. Um, between the four color families of the core collection and then the, the two uh, in colors that we always have rotating out every couple of years. So so anyway, so it was interesting to hear some of that history because I haven't been around for as much of it as some others have. Um, she's been a demonstrator for 25 years and uh, I think Brenda was the only one in the room who'd been a demonstrator longer, which is uh, 26 years. I was there at on stage, like I mentioned uh, with Brenda and she got to do her walk across the stage for her 25th anniversary, stamp anniversary, which is very exciting. Um, and then my follow-up question to that was, where do you anticipate Stampin' Up! could go in the next 35 years, or at least the next few? Um, and so, uh, what did she share here? Again, you know, nothing, no like, shh, these are the, the future plans that now you get to know. Uh, so I think it's okay to say, but I think she said just something about, you know, wanting to continue to grow and maybe expand into new markets and just be able to share this with more people. Um, again, about the people and about sharing what we love with them and making a difference that way. Um, so then, like I said, some other people asked some questions that kind of led me to, uh, think of other things. Like someone was asking about, um, the incentive trips and, 
how they choose those and how far in advance they plan them and who plans them. And um, I guess to give you a little information on that, if you're interested. So um, they used to rotate markets now uh, for cost, because you know there's a budget to this like there is for anything. Um, they're doing more and more of them near where most of their demonstrators are by number, um, which is the North American region. Um, but they plan them out, I think, a few years in advance. Um, there was talk throughout about how like there's, you know, like three to five year, not just plans, but like um, plans coming to fruition. Like, you know, catalogs are being created years in advance and colors are being chosen years in advance and things like that. So trips are being planned years in advance um, by the events team. And so anyway, um, when Sarah was talking about that, she mentioned that not the next incentive trip, but the following, which would be when, 2025? So if you're a demonstrator, the Stampin' Up! year is October to October, or I guess October to September, starts October 1st. So that's when we can start earning the 2025 incentive trip. And it's gonna be in Disney World. And I did not know this, which I guess it had been announced recently, but I'd missed that. And so as much as I like follow all the updates, uh, like a kid on Christmas morning, uh, whenever those come out, I had missed that one. and. I gasped like audibly and like my entire like half of the room I was sitting in was like giggling with me about the fact that I like completely involuntarily was like <gasps> Disney <laughs> my inner child came out as she often does and um so I raised my hand and asked uh what did I ask about Disney oh because I had been wondering um if there could ever be a partnership between Stampin' Up one of my favorite companies and Disney one of my favorite companies um where Stampin' Up could sell Disney images or you know sayings and things like that from their characters and their stories um and so uh Marilee actually answered more of that question and she again I hope it's okay to say I mean she wasn't making any promises but um she basically said like maybe um she even said at one point you know like could we get the licensing because that was my biggest concern I mean would they be interested first of all but then also like is that realistic because I imagine like Disney is not inexpensive to partner with um, to be able to use their, you know, images and again, like quotes or stories. Um, and she was like, you know, could we, you know, however she worded that, like, uh, you know, have that licensing be financially feasible? And she said, maybe. So it didn't sound to me like maybe wink, wink, like it's happening, but it also didn't sound like probably not. So again, is there interest? There is for me. <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, um, Sarah did say back when they were selling other companies' product, they did sell some Disney product um, before they went exclusive. So I doubt it, but it was fun to know that it's possible and very exciting to know that Stampin' Up! is going to Disney World in a couple of years. I don't know that I could get there with them, but anyway, we'll see. Um, the other thing that someone asked about was how many employees the company has, and I don't remember. I think it was somewhere in like the 400s. Um, but... <laughs> That made me wonder, I mean, I had, again, I had been wondering, these were questions I kind of had like in the back of my mind, but I was like, ah, I probably won't get a chance to ask. I don't need to ask, but they came up. So I asked. Um, so I think this was actually like the last official question of the Q and A, but I asked if Stampin' Up! ever has or would um, hire someone who didn't live in Utah to work remotely for the company. <laughs> and I said, you know, like maybe from New Jersey. <laughs> and people around me started teasing me in good spirit, I think. Um, like, I think she's applying. <laughs> um, but uh, I think Sarah's response was something like, you know, they do have people in different parts of the world um, where, you know, they don't have an office or at least don't have the home office. Um, so my takeaway was like, I need to move abroad and then I can work for Stampin' Up. Um, but she said, you know, it's possible. So who knows, who knows? Um, but a couple other, I guess, uh, just really meaningful personal moments for me with Sarah. Um, and I, I, again, I don't know if I'll share this with everyone um, or not, because I don't know if it's valuable to anyone else, but just for my own memory's sake, I, I want to be able to remember this. So, um, like I said, I hadn't had a chance to meet her before the event started. When we were all kind of sitting down, she was at the table just behind me. And so I turned around and I said, hi. And, um, and it just wasn't the time to be able to say more than that. And then we all went over to take pictures together. You know, it was funny. She said, you know, I've got a checklist I have to, I have to do from the home office. And, you know, like I have to take a picture this way and that way in a video. And uh, so we did all those things together. Uh, never would have known that, you know, that could make her nervous uh, 
I don't think it made her that nervous, but, um, you know, she's so good at that when you see her online. And, um, and so anyway, it was fun to get to see the behind the scenes and be a part of that. So we went over to do that. And I think I, you know, like, as I was walking by her, she was walking by me, I got to like say hi again, but again, it wasn't the time to say more than that. And then, you know, then I'm at her table and it's like halfway through the event and we're crafting together and we're talking, um, you know, like we've known one another. And, and again, like, I do feel like I know her because of how much she shares, but like, she doesn't know me. So I wish it had been a little bit more smooth, like at the beginning to be able to like go over and like say hello and introduce myself and thank her for being there. But it wasn't. <laughs> so as I'm getting up from her table, um, you know, I said, I haven't actually had a chance to even introduce myself to you yet. I'm Hannah. And she looked me right in the eyes and she said, I know who you are. And I <laughs> felt so something good. I can't even quite put into words in that moment, but it just meant so much to me that like this person who I so admire and again, feel like I've been allowed to know through her transparency knew who I was uh, because I am not a high level demonstrator. I have not been a demonstrator for very long. Um, and so I just felt really good. And I really have to thank Brenda for that because later, um, when I finally did get my picture with Sarah, uh, when things were ending, you know, I, I went up to her and said, you know, I, I would love to get a picture with you if I could. Um, cause again, most people had a chance to do that earlier on. So we went over to get a picture and I asked her, I said, you know, can I ask how you knew who I was? Like, did someone here mention something? And she said that Brenda, um, when they had met, I think the day before had shared, uh, who I was and about the group, um, that I had started. And, um, and so thank you, Brenda, <laughs> for uh, giving me that moment with Sarah where she knew who I was. Um, and, uh, and she, you know, said some very kind things about um, appreciating that I did start that group. She kind of asked how it had started and I shared with her and again shared that like it wouldn't have been anything had people not replied to my initial outreach. Um, but, you know, she was saying she appreciates the living out of the company's values to, you know, bring people together. And I just, you know, honestly, again, was just reflecting back that like, it's credit to them for replying and engaging. And, and I said, you know, and thank you for, for making it all possible. Um, because we wouldn't have had that thing in common to bring us together without stamping up. Um, so, so anyway, um, then when we were, um, after getting our picture talking, uh, she was asking, you know, what, um, I guess brought me to Stampin' Up! or how I found out about Stampin' Up! So I got to share that with her and how I signed up three times, uh, three years in a row, signed up to be a demonstrator. And uh, finally, on the third time, was able to make it work because the first two times I dropped because <laughs> I couldn't meet the very first uh, quarterly minimums. I was like, I couldn't afford to do it on my own and I wasn't finding uh, people who, who could be customers to help me do it. So, um, so yeah, so I got to share all that with her and, um, and, uh, and, you know, there's more to, to say in answer to her questions, like about how our group got started and how I, um, learned about Stampin' Up, but I think I've probably shared that before. I can share that another time. That's, that's things that I know I'm not going to forget, uh, cause that's my story, but I just, I really want to share with you and again, share for at least my sake to remember the things she, uh, she shared with us about her story. And so, um, then at the, the very end of the event, um, I gave her a thank you card, which I don't have because of course I gave it to her. Um, I can share a picture, um, in my blog, but I do have my version of it because I wanted to have one too. It's a little different than hers. Uh, hers is better. I gave her the better one. <laughs> um, so I kind of learned on mine, but it says life is better when you're crafting. Um, it kind of gives it away. Hers just said life is better and then was blank here until you lift it up. I've got this ribbon, which I'll let you see real quick before I lift it up is colored. Well, it's black and white, just like this is, but then it turns to color. So that might give you a hint of what's to come. So life is better when you're crafting, not much crafting going on here, but there's a lot going on there. So the inspiration for this was um, the process of creating Stampin' Up! product. So someone, you know, painting um, a floral image on a canvas and then that becoming uh, DSP. This is actually a piece of the welcome letter because this is kind of Stampin' Up's branding. Like you'll see it on, do I have my, where's my um, organizer? So like Stampin' Up's branding is this, uh, you know, floral design. And so, you know, that's what's on here. 
that's what's on here. This is, like I said, this is a piece of the actual welcome letter um, that Sarah writes and you get when you get a starter kit to be a demonstrator. Um, and then it's like you're cutting it in the paper trimmer, which is, you know, Stampin' Up's paper trimmer with the same colors of like cutting blade and scoring blade with the dark gray, the light gray. These are our paper snips um, with the black handle. And then it's, you know, being one of these flowers is, it's actually a stamped flower, but it's supposed to look like, you know, you're fussy cutting a piece of the DSP. So it's like from concept art to DSP to crafting. Um, so yeah, life is better when you're crafting. So that was the, um, I guess it's like a magic window card because then, you know, you slide it back in and it goes blank again. Um, that is a similar version of what I made for her. And so, you know, I gave it to her. It was busy. Lots of people wanted to talk to her, obviously, and I didn't want to monopolize her time. So, um, you know, I said, please just, uh, you know, read it another time. But let me know if you have any trouble opening it. I said, you know, my information's in the envelope because, again, one of those moments later where I was like, did I really just tell Sarah, of all people, like, that I'm not sure she'll be able to open a card, <laughs> like even a fancy fold card. But it wasn't about her ability. It was about like the card itself because I had done my best to make it. I had put a lot of pressure on myself about it actually. <laughs> but um, but it, it had not worked out quite the way I wanted. It wasn't a really smooth, like you might've noticed, like it wasn't a really smooth open and close because basically I wanted to fit a lot on here, right? There's a lot going on. And so I needed it to be this big. This is actually four and a quarter by six and a quarter. It's our biggest card. It's the size of our memories and more uh, cards and envelopes. And so, um, so yeah, so it was really wide. And so there wasn't much room for like the sliding mechanism here um, that would normally make it much smoother. So it wasn't that I didn't think she would know how to do it or wouldn't be able to do it. I was worried that like the card itself wasn't gonna work well. Um, so anyway, but that was one of those things later, I was like, I can't believe I did that. Um, I don't know if she'll ever see this and she'll, uh, she'll know that that was why it was doubting myself, not doubting her. But anyway, um, hopefully she didn't take it that way. Um, so yeah, but then I guess she did get a chance to read it and um, she came over and, you know, thanked me and it just felt like a really good moment of connection because I really did want her to know how much she and all her family and everyone in the company uh, has done, how much they've done and how much that means to us. Um, so I won't share the message I shared with her cause that was just for her, but, um, but yeah, just really wanting to celebrate the 35th anniversary and all that they've done and all that they've been and thank them for it. Um, so she came over and, you know, gave me a hug and thanked me. And I was still worried about <laughs> if she'd had trouble with the card. Cause again, I didn't feel like it worked out so well. So I was like, you know, were you able to get it open? Were you able to get it closed? <laughs> um, and then as she was walking away, she, again, she had one of those, you know, just really connected moments, at least that's how it felt to me, where she looked me in the eye and she said something like, this is not the last time we'll meet. <laughs> and I was speechless, which I am almost never <laughs> speechless. There have been very few times in my life where I just don't know what to say. And so there was a pause that felt long to me. I don't know if it would have seemed long to anyone else, but then just like, you know, involuntarily what came out to me was, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> which was kind of funny, but it does, it does sound good. I would love to meet her again. <clears throat> I would love to meet more of the team that we get to work with at Stampin' Up. I only use the air quotes cause like we haven't met most of them in person. They haven't met many of us in person. Um, you know, as much as again, they do like, this is such a, an exceptional example of, you know, them getting out and wanting to meet us and be with us. But there's so many of us, there's only so much they can do. I know I said earlier that I think the number of employees was something like 400, but the number of demonstrators is like, thousands it might be tens of thousands um I think she shared that too but I don't remember I'm not good with numbers but um she did she shared like how many demonstrators were in each market apparently there's 10 in Ireland way to go Ireland I think it was Ireland Ireland and Belgium one of our two newest markets um I'm sure it's gonna grow but it just opened that market just opened and so those early people I I know it's hard work Sarah was saying you know it's hard work being the first but it's also good to be the first because then you're gonna build uh, over time that, you know, following that, um, only time can do. So anyway, um, yeah, there's so many of us and they do such a good job getting out to us, but you know, they can only do so much. And so, um, so yeah, I would love to meet more of them and continue to work even more, um, with them because they are all in my experience, just such good people. I, I don't, I don't like that way of saying it. Cause it's not like I think there's like bad people and good people, but um, they really are 
I don't know, just the, the type of people I connect with. They're my people, I guess, or at least I hope they're my people. I hope that's how I am too. That's at least what I aspire to be. So thank you again. Um, again, I don't know if I'll share this with anyone, um, but if I do share this publicly and if somehow Sarah or anyone else at Stampin' Up's uh, home office does see this, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do and all that you are. Um, thank you to my friends who may be watching this, whether we've met yet or not. Um, again, I want to be for others um, what the people who have been good to me have been for me. And so, you know, just like uh, Stampin' Up shares with us and engages with us, I wanna share with you and engage with you. So um, please comment on this video if I even make that an option uh, by putting it out there and I will try to reply. I always try to reply to any comment on anything I share. Um, you can subscribe, probably not for more of this, because again, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Although I will say, um, after we found out that Brenda was chosen to host her event for the 35 for 35 celebration, um, and after she had invited those of us who she knew from our group, and after we had committed to helping her however we could, um, I actually found out that the application I submitted for our group also got accepted, um, which I am so honored um, to be able to say. So it's actually, I guess, a twice in a lifetime opportunity for me, um, which feels like too much. And if you are wondering, I did ask about that. <laughs> so um, it won't be Sarah coming to our event, but it will be Brian Pilling, who, ooh, let me see if I can get his title right. I'm not gonna remember it right now. I think it's like demonstrator experience manager. It's not quite right, but something like that. Um, but he's been at Stampin' Up! a long time and is uh, is quite a character, from what I understand, in a good way, <laughs> as part of the Stampin' Up! team. Um, so we're really excited to get to meet him. Um, and I immediately asked him, as we were talking about this um, opportunity, if it was all right, that there was going to be some overlap of some of us who were at Brenda's event and then some who could be at our group event um, and he did say that there's been overlap at some of these events before and um, and that that was you know fine they still wanted to um, to accept our application and join our event so um, I had submitted that application back I think at the beginning when applications opened early in 2023 um, before I knew anything about Brenda also submitting uh, for her team meeting and it was on behalf uh, my application was on behalf of the Northish Jersey SU demonstrators group um, and so we will be hosting that in October so you will hear from me um, after that one as well um, but again we'll have a different guest we have you know a different purpose it's not Brenda's team meeting it's our group's um, bi-monthly swap that we do it'll be a shoebox swap which we do a couple times a year so far and um, and certainly wanted to be able to actually craft it together um, for the 35 for 35 event with Brian because um, our other uh, meetups are usually just prepared project swaps rather than getting to uh, craft together because we get together at what is the quintessential Jersey uh, experience a local diner um, at different places around the state to uh, to accommodate our different members and so anyway that's more of other things that I've either told you before or could tell you another time but um but yeah, where was I going with this? I was talking about this once in a lifetime experience. So yes, I was saying, you know, you can subscribe for more um, of maybe not always like debriefs on events, certainly not this long <laughs> videos. This is maybe my longest video ever, unless my debrief of on stage was longer. Um, that would probably be the only one that would even be close. I know I've done some really long tutorials back in the day, uh, but I try to keep those short. Um, when I share tutorials, I also do unboxings. Those are always quicker. Um, show and tells those are quicker. Um, but anyway, that's what I do. And if you can uh, share that with others you think would be interested, I'd love to grow this creative community because again, um, that's what it's about to me. It's about creating and creating a community. That's what I love to do and what I love to, to share. So thank you. I'm sure there's more I'm forgetting. Um, but thank you for letting me share this much so that at least I can remember it. And I hope it was of value to you as well. Happy crafting. Okay, so I thought I was done and then I looked down at my feet and I saw there is more. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm glad that was off camera though because I definitely like said something I wouldn't want to say on camera um, when I realized that. So I'm just going to show you real quick a few other things. So uh, first of all, Brenda gave away door prizes and I was lucky enough to win one. So I got a pack of the 
again, 2023, September to December mini catalog. So there's the cover. You can see it's coming. That's all I'm allowed to show you for now, but more to come, more to come soon. And thank you, Brenda, for that prize. Um, and then we got a goodie bag, which again, I have not even looked through yet. That is how busy I've been. So here's the bag, beautiful uh, name tag for everyone on there, which I think might pull off. Does it pull off or open up? It kind of looks like it does. I can't tell, I don't wanna break it. Maybe not. Okay, maybe not, but I'm probably gonna find a way to pull that off because I wanna keep that. Um, all right, so let's see what we've got here. So I know this was made by Sharon Abrams. Let's check it out. She's given us these before. So it's a beautiful journal. And this has the statement of the heart, which I was trying to remember earlier. And I was, you know, thinking, oh, I'm not gonna be able to find it anywhere um, easily, quickly in my craft room. So I'm so glad this is on here. It's to love what we do, check. And share what we love, check. As we help others enjoy creativity and worthwhile accomplishments, I hope so. In this, we make a difference, exclamation point. So that's Stampin' Up! Statement of the Heart. So what you do is you pull out this pen, which I really like this pen, and then it opens up and you've got your notebook. So I love that. And I love the craft with the black and white. That's very much my style. So what a great gift. Sharon always does great things and is very generous with them. All right, what else? These were all voluntarily donated. I think this was also, yeah, this was Sharon Abrams as well. Love a pun. So it says Brenda's Stampin' Up! 35 for 35 event, Saturday, August 19th, 2023. And then it's got the Give It a World Dies, which I told her, I was like, I love those. She's like, I know, you're the reason I got them because <laughs> I had done a swap with them. And um, anyway, so that was fun. But it says Mint to be Stampin'. Love a pun. And then let's see if I can get it to twirl or whirl. And then you've got some mints or gum. <laughs> so cute. Love it. All right, what else? All right, so this I know is from Carol Bone. She is actually from Pennsylvania. So she's part of our Northish Jersey group, but that's where the ish comes in, Northish. I know it's not a good name. Uh, it's calling it what it is. I didn't expect it to become what it became or is becoming. And so I just literally was calling it what it was, but I think we're gonna have to maybe evolve the name at some point. Cause we have Carol who makes her way all the way from Pennsylvania. She'll always say, you know, oh, it's just over the border. It's, you know, right across the river from New Jersey, but still it's a long commute. Um, so I appreciate it. And um, and now I think we have someone who's gonna be joining us from New York. So so yeah, we're becoming very ish, North-ish Jersey. We're actually becoming Jersey-ish. <laughs> North-ish, Jersey-ish. Um, so she's made these for us before, which is so fun. This is a product that Stampin' Up! doesn't sell anymore. Um, never sold in my time, but they used to sell fabric. So she makes these really cute and convenient little um, tissue holders. And you can see there's different patterns on the inside. I guess it's double-sided or maybe she doubles it up. But anyway, super cute and fun. So thank you, Carol, for that. Um, and let's see what else. I'm just trying to put it back together. Bear with me. As Sarah would say, hold please. <laughs> she says that in her videos a lot. We all need to take a minute from time to time get things sorted. All right. Forgive the loud envelope, but thank you to you people putting things in clear envelopes to protect them. It's certainly worth it. Oh my gosh. How cute is that? You know, I love creating, recreating things out of paper. So it's a super cute little purse. And I think there's treats inside, which I'm feeling kind of hungry for. Yep. Little kisses, a bag full of kisses. How cute. Let's see who made that. This is Judy Goddard. I don't know if I got a chance, to, or sorry, Jody. Jody Goddard and Anita Ritchie. So I don't think I got a chance to meet them. Um, oh, sorry. And Linda Gaddy. Wow. Made by all three of them. Okay. I think I may have gotten to meet Linda. I met a Linda, but there were a couple people there, you know, with the same name. So anyway, thank you all. Linda, Jody, and Anita. Sorry that I was getting your names wrong and leaving you out for a minute there. All right, this, I don't know who made this. I think it might've been Emma Kaplan. It doesn't have her name on it, but I think I saw something later that the unmarked goodie was from Emma. If I'm getting that wrong and you're watching this, please correct me. Um, so another little cute purse, love that. And then, oh, a bunch of mints. I should have opened this on the day of. This could have been useful, <laughs> um, but I was too busy. I was too busy trying to be in the moment and take it all in. 
Um, and then I don't know who made this, but check that out. It's got our logo on it. How cool is that? So I guess it's like a envelope opener. Um, I think someone told me because I did see I did see a couple things like I saw this someone you know was opening their bag and being like look um, and it was my friend Sally and I think she said that's what this is for but I love that it has the Stampin' Up! logo on there I'm sure I will find uses for another paper cutter um, does that say who it was from um, oh okay yeah so this so okay so this gives some good uh, credit so Carol Davison and Kathy Davis provided um, the goodie bag with, oh, hidden paperclip bookmark name tag. So maybe that does come off and gets reused as a bookmark. Um, and they also provided the letter opener, which I guess is what that is. And then this is by Kathy. So Kathy Davis, she made this decorated cookie. How beautiful is that? Although I think I'm going to have to eat it anyway, because it also looks delicious. I'm like salivating. Sorry. <laughs> um, 35, obviously, 35 for 35. And I think, you know, it's been in this beautiful sealed box for at least a week. Hopefully it's still good. Oh, it looks like it's wrapped in plastic too. Okay. Um, but yeah, that looks delicious and beautiful. Almost too beautiful to eat. And yet my sweet tooth is only growing with age. So I think I'm gonna have to eat it. Um, so that's the goodie bag. So thanks for letting me share those last few things with you. Now I'll say happy crafting.